An exemplary man, the dream of all ladies. A medieval knight, a handsome man in shining armor, a noble defender of the weak, and his gallant chivalrous attitude to the ladies went down in history. But if you met a real knight on a white horse, you would be horrified, probably. They were too different from the image created by the novels. Why would you dislike their appearance? Were the knights gallant to the ladies? And what does it really mean to love like a knight? Were the most famous knights fearless and irreproachable? And what were the craziest vows they took? Why was a married life to a knight no picnic? And is it true that women were accepted into knightly orders too? So, meet our protagonist, Nest Ferris, and is the 12th century. Nest is the princess of the Welsh kingdom of Dehibard, and she is famous for her extraordinary beauty from an early age. Our protagonist is waiting for a visit of the famous knight Owain of Cadogan, the son of Prince Powys. Finally, the door opens, but who does she see on the threshold? This is how we imagine a knight of the Middle Ages. This image is created by numerous books and films. And this is what he probably looked like in reality. You may ask, why is he so shaggy? He looks like Neanderthal. The thing is, there was no time to shave during the campaigns. And secondly, the beard hit skin imperfections. In those centuries, smallpox was raging in Europe, and the faces of knights were pockmarked. Add to this a variety of skin diseases and acne due to hygiene problems. All this was covered with a beard and moustache, in which lived the invincible opponents of the knights, lies and fleas. Of course, the fact that they washed three times a year is just a legend and nothing more than that. However, they didn't wash often, especially during the campaigns. Also, underwear and clothes were not changed for a long time, and they were not washed, but only cleaned. In general, a knight on a white horse didn't smell like violets. For the Crusaders, it was a mystery how Saladin's soldiers easily found the camp. And the secret was just in the smell. A stench from the knights spread for dozens of miles. They were not giants either. Today we would say they were rather short. And although some of them were tall, scientists believe that in the 14th 15th century their average height rarely exceeded 1 meter 60 centimeter. Forget about the gleaming white smile of the knights in the movies. Well, they tried to brush their teeth with herbs but it didn't help much. Cavities and endless bottles did the trick. Knights had much fewer teeth than modern hockey players. Add to this a bad breath, which we try to cover by eating garlic, and their portrait is almost ready. However, we have to stand up for the poor knight on a white horse. A popular legend says they didn't take off their armor for days, because a squire needed an hour to remove it, and therefore the knights relieved themselves directly in their iron suits. In fact, they put on armor only before the bottle, and the armor was provided with a fly and other moments. One of these knights on a white horse appeared in front of the princess Nest Ferris. The knights themselves didn't care what they looked like or what they smelled like. Women's opinions didn't bother them at all, especially if these women were commoners. You would say, well, what about serving to a beautiful lady of the heart who was idolized by knights? It is true that the beautiful lady called Troubadour's culture and courtly loved blossomed in the late 11th, early 12th century in Provence in the south of France. Fighting to win the favor of the Lady of the Heart became common practice for knights. 
However, not all knights were as gallant as they are usually represented. This cult of the beautiful lady flourished especially in the courts of the famous courtly queens of that time, Eleanor of Aquitaine, her daughter Mary of Champagne, and her niece Isabella of Flanders. They became the most brilliant centers of chivalric culture of the late 12th century. At their courts took place the famous courts of love. One of them, by the way, recognized the unworthy behavior of a lady who refused to provide ordinary pleasures to her lover after her marriage. But the idea of chivalrous love, which was presented in the troubadour's poetry in the 11th 12th centuries, was the love of unmarried knight to a married beautiful lady. Marriage was that insuperable barrier by which love acquired the necessary degree of tragic hopelessness. This hopelessness was the main subject of the troubadour's lyrics. And this was due to the marriage customs of the Middle Ages. Then, to avoid of land sharing between brothers, the family only let their eldest son to get married. He inherited all the land and buildings, and the fate of younger sons was chivalrous love, platonic adoration of the wife of his master, the lord, and the elder brother. Well, they could only have relationships with representatives of the lower classes. By the way, subscribe to our channel right now not to miss the next video in which you can live one day with a female pharaoh of ancient Egypt. At the same time, you'll learn why did female pharaohs shave their heads and wear false beards. Is that true that beautiful Nefertiti was cheated on by her husband and was unlucky with her mother-in-law? Were the divine ladies of Egypt happy? And don't forget to hit the notification bell. By the time the famous knight arrived, our protagonist was already married to the Anglo-Norman knight, Gerald of Windsor. So, on Christmas Day, 1109, a knight who was a distant relative of our protagonist came to visit them. Owain was so captivated by Nest's beauty that he and his 15 companions attacked their castle in gratitude for their hospitality and kidnapped Nest and her children. It should be noted that the Nest's husband was a knight too. But according to legend, Gerald ran away through the latrine when Owen attacked the castle. According to legend, Nest appeared in front of a gang of knights and said, The one you are looking for is not here, he has escaped. These words angered the noble knight so much that he immediately assaulted Nest and took her and her children to his hunting lodge. How do you like such nobility? By the way, even the most famous knights of the Middle Ages were far from being fearless and irreproachable on closer examination. So, the prototype of the famous Roland, a governor of the Briton March through Andlundus, was just a Muslim's mercenary. In Spain, Charles and probably his Roland destroyed one of the Basque cities, a Christian city, by the way. Equally famous King Richard the Lionheart the perfect guardian of the honor of England, an ideal king and knight, a hero of the Crusades and the Robin Hood story. He was not the most pleasant person, actually. He hated England and the English in general and considered his subjects unpleasant cattle. And he went on a crusade just to leave England. The knights plundered towns and villages, were engaged in usury and use the local population. However, knights had voluntary restrictions, vows like monks. Like monks, almost all knights were obliged to follow personal asceticism and humble obedience. But there were also very strange vows. Chevalier de la Tour Landry in the 14th century described an order of lovers, Gelois et Gelois. Its members had to wear fur coats and sit by a fireplace in summer and put on summer-like clothes in cold winter to prove that their feelings were serious. The frozen and the dead were called mothers of love. 
it would seem so romantic. Only, according to the Charter of the Order, its members also had to change their wives for a while as a sign of hospitality. Other knights took a vow not to open one eye until they had accomplished a feat, or for example they could only eat and drink standing up for years, or eat no meat and for example not to change clothes until a particular city was taken. Knights often refused to cut their hair and shave for the sake of a vow. Thus, one knight didn't feed his horse on Fridays until he defeated the Turks, and another vowed not to sleep on Saturdays until he defeated the Saracen in battle. But let's go back to our protagonist. If you think that life with famous knight was a pleasure, then you are mistaken. They served to an accessible beautiful lady, but the woman next to a knight was considered a vessel of sin in the Middle Ages. In fact, a woman had only one right to give birth and raise children. Domestic violence was encouraged by public morals. The Dominican monk Nicholas Bayard at the end of the 13th century wrote, A husband has a right to punish his wife and beat her for her correction, because she belongs to his household property. And such a thing spread in the early 16th century throughout Europe. So sadistic husbands punished their chatty women because it was impossible to talk with it. No wonder a marriage made by their parents was a lifelong nightmare for many women. This is confirmed by the detailed punishments for women who killed their husbands. Such cases seem to be common. However, there were exceptions, of course, but that's why they are exceptions. So, the letters of a noble senior from the 12th century survived. Etienne de Blois sent them to his beloved wife Matilda from the Crusade. They confirm how much a knight could love not a distant beautiful lady, but his own wife. The death of his beloved wife brought Edward I to the grave. His grandson, Edward III, lived in love and harmony with his wife for more than 40 years, but they are the exception. At the same time, in such a chauvinistic medieval Europe, there were also female knights. Even though, according to the common opinion, women were strictly forbidden to enter spiritual knight orders, there were even orders that consisted only of ladies with swords. We are talking about the Order de la Hatra, or the Order of the Axe, which was formed during the Second Crusade, when the women of Tortosa repelled the attack of the Moors using axes. The order lasted until the 15th century. All known spiritual and knightly orders except the Templars accepted women. Both the Teutonic Order and the Knights Hospitallers accepted ladies, although the women in their ranks didn't fight, but treated the wounded or took care of the order's household. However, in the Order of the Glorious Saint Mary, women were also accepted as soldiers. The ladies of the order, however, could get the only rank called militisa, and they could use weapons for self-defense only. There was also the Balkan Hungarian Order of the Dragon, to which belonged the father of the famous Dracula. They also accepted women under certain conditions. There were ladies who fought among men in the Crusades, such as the Princess Guide of Lombardy, nicknamed Sikligaita or Matilda, the Countess of the Tuscany. She lived in the 11th century and fought almost all her life, in total about 30 years in the service of various popes. Moreover, the noble countess happened to fight personally with a sword in her hands and commanded armies. But back to our protagonist. The Prince of Powys urged his son to release the captive, but he didn't listen. Nest only managed to convince her captor to let her children go to their father. Her husband didn't come down, and her abduction caused a real war. The Normans invaded Poison and conquered its territory to the English king. 
Due to the war caused by the abduction of Nest, she was nicknamed Helen of Wales in the 19th century by analogy with Helen of Troy. All White and his father fled to Ireland. However, Nest gave birth to two sons of Alwine before she finally returned to her husband. The offended husband met the offender some times later and killed him. Here is a story about a beautiful lady and a knight on a white horse. Do like and subscribe if you enjoyed this story. Oh, and click on the bell so you get notified when the new episode comes out.